Listener-supported St. Gabriel Catholic Radio AM820 brings you Family Sanctuary, a show that inspires living the gospel message in word and deed within our families. And now, Family Sanctuary with host Peggy Hartshorn. Welcome to the Family Sanctuary, focusing on life-giving relationships and the family. I'm your host, Peggy Hartshorn, Chairman of Heartbeat International that advances life-affirming pregnancy help around the world. And today we have another of the programs in our series on the secrets to uh, a long marriage. But, you know, it's not really a secret. (laughs) And our programs have been featuring wonderful couples who just have a variety of stories, tremendous uh, experiences in marriage and longevity. Uh, You can find many of these programs already recorded uh, in our archives. So we hope you're following some of these great stories. And today we have another one. And uh, this one with the People that I know, interestingly, through pregnancy help, um, and yet uh, that's not what their story is about. It's about their wonderful marriage. Our guests today are Kathy and Dan Scanlon. Welcome, Kathy and Dan. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. (laughs) Well, thank you for saying yes to my invitation to share your story. And, you know, um, I met, I actually came across Kathy and and Dan recently at... uh, a breakfast place just ran into you too and just our short interaction there i was thinking what i could tell what a close couple you are and uh i thought oh i hope they're willing to share so <laughs> thank you for sharing your story with me and now it'll be great uh, to share it with our oh, listeners sure. kathy and dan have been married for 33 years and uh for a long time they were members of saint paul's in westerville so they have mm-hmm. lots mm-hmm. of friends there and now they're members of saint patrick correct and and uh, Kathy is works in the pregnancy help movement with PDHC. So great to have that connection with you, Kathy. And Dan is a realtor with yes. Remax. Mm-hmm. And um, so they've got a, a, a great story uh, that really started when you were in college. You met in college. Is that right? We did. We met my freshman year in college at Ohio State. Uh, one of those, I would say, love at first sight. Um, (laughs) I walked by Dan and he shared with his friend and said to his friend, now there goes a nice girl. And so we just, through mutual (laughs) friends, we just really, we connected that night. Uh We talked through the entire night. Um, and just that initial connection, it truly was, I believe, love at first sight. Mm-hmm. And a here we thing. are 33 yeah, years really. later. <laughs> so we met in January. We were engaged in April. Oh, my and goodness. And we got married the following April. Oh, that's that's a beautiful story. And I know from hearing the rest of the story that this is part of why you named your, your uh, secret Sharing the Journey. Because, Kathy, you were on a journey at that point. You were on a faith journey. And uh, you you met Dan. He was a big part of that faith journey. So um, and your faith journey is really central to your story because both of you kept growing in your faith uh, mm-hmm. through the years. But tell us about that part of sharing your faith journey. Well, my my journey started. Um, Dan has a, a solid foundation. He was born and raised Catholic, very strong, faith filled uh, Catholic family. Um, I was raised um, by very loving parents, um, but I did not have that faith foundation growing up. Um, Always felt that nudging. And uh, when I was in fourth grade, we moved across the street uh, to someone that became my best friend through high school. And she invited me to her church and a youth group. And I would occasionally go with her. And that was really my first introduction into um, that foundation. And I always wanted more. I always remembered feeling, you know, there's something more um, to where really God wants me to go. And I was introduced to the Catholic faith when I was a senior in high school um, by somebody who was important in my life at the time. And I just feel truly when I look back, that was God. Mm-hmm. That was God nudging me in the direction he wanted me to go. And so then when I met Dan as a freshman in college, it was so natural. 
because I had already had that introduction and I wanted more. And Dan, coming from such a, a strong Catholic background, we just immediately connected. That was one of the things that really attracted yeah, you to him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and Dan, I know Kathy already mentioned you're very strong Catholic background, yes. but you continue uh, well, to grow. Oh, I do. And with the help of Kathy. Yeah. See, so, That's I mean, interesting. It, it, it's Your a, journey it's a, helped yeah, each other. Yeah, we spark each other. You know? <laughs> um, but I did have a um, my background. Uh, my parents were just an, incredible. Uh, my dad was... Uh, was such a strong practicing Catholic, and my mom, incredible woman, was just as strong in the Catholic faith as well. Um, actually, Dad was when we got married. Dad was my best man in our wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, he was truly uh, my best man. But I mean, we I just couldn't have had better better parents, and mm-hmm. and, and they just uh, they walked uh, they walked the walk and and showed us um, you know what it was to be. Uh, a practicing Catholic. So mm-hmm. we were just, my brothers and I, sisters and I, we were just uh, so, so fortunate and blessed right. to have those two. But of course, we all need to grow. And and uh, at the time you met Kathy, were you also a freshman in college? No, I'm older. Oh, yeah. much older. Huh? <laughs> not, not much Sophomore. older. Sophomore. No, let's not, I mean, I, I just look a lot much older, but, um, but I'm not much older, but I, I am older. Yes. I, I'm, I'm older. So. And you told me you went through the RCIA with Kathy. Oh, I did. So you know, that helped um, in yeah, your that, journey. And that was important, too, um, because uh, obviously she had a previous uh, experience with Catholicism, but uh, she, didn't become, she didn't become Catholic uh, for me. Uh, she uh, As a favor to you. Right, right. right. <laughs> like, okay, so we're getting serious, so I better become the same faith. No. no she became Catholic for her. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so I think that's, I think that's very important. Yeah. Um, she had a, f- her faith journey. You exactly. were on your faith journey, yeah. but your journeys connected. Yeah. And then you brought up RCIA. So Kathy, RCIA was, just for our listeners, right of Christian initiation right. for adults, which is the program that most people who enter the Catholic church take this program in, in a parish and really learn about all the teachings of the church. Right. And that's available at the parishes. You see the, uh, the groups uh, on Sundays and and it's a, just a, a great program and uh, but for me I mean I'd already gone through Catholic grade school and high school and and uh, and I'm and I'm a Ohio Dominican grad so oh. I went the full route <laughs> Good. Um, but uh, had a lot of uh, you know I was a cradle Catholic uh, and then when Kathy was going through RCIA I went through it with her um, and uh, I believe it was Father Hart. And he was a, a, a great guy and great instructor for Kathy. And we used to meet over at the the, the priest house, and um, it was just a, a great experience. And me being a cradle Catholic, going through RCIA and having it all, you know, going through all of that, being uh, really taught again, yes, mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. A, an outstanding experience. I mean, it, it really, um, it was great. I'm, it was just a, a great mm-hmm. experience. Yeah, but your your faith obviously was a journey that you experienced together early on as you were preparing for marriage. You became a Catholic then before you got married. I did. Yes. Okay. So then that was a really full year of your courtship. It was. <laughs> it was Amazing. A great year. So God was. was bringing your journey together there and helping you bond. I know one of the things we talked about previously as, as I was hearing about your story was that whenever either of you had a faith experience, Kathy, if you went on a retreat or or Dan, you went on uh, maybe the Catholic Men's Conference. Mm-hmm. One of the things you shared with me was that one, of, any one of these faith experiences, you always came back and were really excited to share with each other. Yes. Because, yeah, your journey started early with sharing your faith. It, it really did. And, you know, when I was thinking about this, there were different parts to my growth that at the time had a significant impact on me. And I think back into the beginning, because I was young in my faith, and, you know, I I would get involved in uh, Bible studies. Um, I would do a daily devotional, you know, wake up in the morning, and there was a wonderful devotional that a very good friend of mine, her mother, gave to me. And it became my favorite at the time. It was very structured, and it was a daily meditation and reflection, and that helped me grow 
to be a better wife, to be a better mother, mm. um, to be able to share what I was learning through that journey uh, with Dan. And I can't remember the name of it. I was trying to think <laughs> of the name of it. It was uh, Living Life Abundantly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to find now, but that became my ultimate favorite gift that I would give to friends mm-hmm. because it mm-hmm. made such a significant impact on me. Right. And but I think what's so so special, too, is that it never just was about you. You would always share it with Dan. Right. Because your faith journey was so important to both of you. Well, we talk, we talked a lot, and we still do. We, we do talk a lot. Everybody talks. You know, we talk about, um, you know, sports, and we talk about uh, people and news and mm-hmm. politics, like everybody, right? So No, everybody doesn't talk that much to their spouse. <laughs> well, we, we, we talk a lot. You know, I remember we in Ireland. We talk a lot. <laughs> I was hanging upside down and we they have said, the gift of gab. yeah, they, they, they told Kathy, they said, this will give him the gift of gab when I was at Blarney Castle kissing the oh, Blarney yes, in Ireland. I know. And, uh, and, and Kathy looked at the guy and said, well, he doesn't need that. <laughs> um, but, um, well, I, I, I went off uh, track there. Um, <laughs> you were talking about how much you shared your faith with each other and yeah, how we, important we talk that a lot was. about a lot of things. So why not talk about God too? So, sure. so we're going, um, you know, she, she's always going to the women's Catholic conference and, mm-hmm. and, and I go to the men's conference and she does the walking purpose and, and, uh, and I've been in, uh, that man is you groups, um, Curcio retreats. Um, you know, we, we do some things together like adoration and also Kathy's a Eucharistic minister, but all these outside experiences and resources that are available, you go off and you kind of do them a lot of times separately but then, like when she comes back from her conference, you know, we kind of talk about the speakers and talk about different things. And I come back from the men's conference and we do the same and, and, and different shows and different articles that we read. So I think that is kind of important. I mean, we talk about everything else. Why not talk about that? Sure. And, and sharing that, that belief of keeping God first, mm-hmm. I think, enhances the marriage and makes it stronger. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously... Uh, you know, we're not, we're far from perfect and our marriage is far from perfect. Nobody's perfect. Um, but, uh, but uh, keeping that communication open and really sharing about your faith experiences, how you're growing, what may be a challenge for you right now, what you've just learned, a, a, a reflection or a, a prayer that you've, that you've just read. That's really powerful, you know, and we have other programs on, on in our archives that we've done for the family sanctuary about the importance of, of couple prayer. But for a lot of people that is so intimate and so personal that they even have a hard time discussing that with their spouse. So Mm -hmm. I think because you started so early in your journey, your faith journey, uh, binding you together, that that's still such a great strength. Well, we have a beautiful story today that we're sharing uh, Dan and Kathy Scanlon's marriage of 33 years, and uh, they've been sharing about their faith journey, how that started out so early with them when they were actually right after they met. Kathy was looking for um, a stronger faith. Uh, she met Dan, who was a very strong cradle Catholic. They did our CIA together. Dan, I suppose you were Kathy's sponsor. Yes. yes. I, yeah. And, and <laughs> what was neat when, when she went through that whole process... I one thing I do remember is um, the day that that her ceremony, you know, and in, in coming into the the church, I believe it was over at um, at Ohio Dominican in the chapel there, and my entire family was there. Oh, and beautiful. you know, and and uh, and I believe if I'm not mistaken. I mean, this is a long time ago, but um, they gave her a gift of in this. Uh, this time of year, they um, they gave her a gift of uh, a, a really nice nativity scene. Oh, that's and, beautiful! Uh, so it was it was really kind of that's kinda the, neat. It your was, nativity scene that you have now, I assume. Yes, yeah, you yeah, keep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so well, that, yeah. that, that that was re- that was uh, really special, and uh, so uh, wel- welcoming her into the church and welcoming her into the family. It was yeah. it, it was all connected. So yeah. it, it was kind of well. Let's special. talk about. After, um, in in your marriage, obviously, despite the really strong faith that you have and that you share, there have been challenges, mm-hmm. of course. And I think it's it's important how how 
you handled those challenges through the years. I know one of the things that was challenging for both of you, you've both been in very uh, high intensity jobs, Mm -hmm. careers that sometimes involve, they involve sales, they involve um, incentives, they involve meeting goals. And I know one of the things we talked about, Kathy, was um, you were in retail for a long time. And sometimes having to work on holidays, Sundays, the stress of that with raising your two children. Tell us about that. That and how the two of you were able to handle that kind of a challenge. Well, and like you said, I mean, you know, we have a wonderful marriage, but we also have a normal marriage where we've been through trials and tribulations mm-hmm. and those stressors working weekends, holidays, high pressure job, you know, would take a toll on me. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe I wasn't um, as nice as I could be. Uh, Maybe there was some resentment there. Um, And so, you know, that would cause some conflict. And I think it's so important to be able to reflect on that with the importance of faith in, in a marriage. And, you know, putting your spouse before yourself. Uh, Dan has always been very good at that. Um, he's very selfless. Um, As you are. Highly. You <laughs> That's know, sweet the way you affirm each other. He, I love that. He, he is a great man. Um, he's been a great leader of the family, and he shares it with the kids and the children, too. But truly, you know, I, I just remember taking long walks, and all I could do was just pray because I was so stressed out at the time and maybe was taking it out on Dan and our relationship and just taking those long four mile walks and just praying the entire time, um, getting up in the morning and doing a devotional. Um, and one of the things that I was thinking about as we were talking here is the people that you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. So by becoming involved in these groups, walking with purpose an amazing Bible study, the people that you meet, we have very dear friends, longtime friends that we've had friends together since we've been mm-hmm. married, and you grow in faith together. So you surround your pe- yourself with people that also help you in the journey. You can call if, if you're really under a lot of stress. Absolutely. Pray so for I have me. Very Come and dear, have coffee. <laughs> yes. I have very dear friends who, you know, we we pray for each other, Mm -hmm. you know, um, when you need somebody to talk to, you know, outside of your spouse, you know, having a trusted friend. spouse are having a conflict. Yes. Right. You, you, we support each other in marriage. And I know that's been so important for, for Mike and me. We've been married now for 50 years and, uh, our circle of, of couple friends, faith-filled couple friends, we developed through Worldwide Marriage Encounter, which I know was not your experience. You've Mm -hmm. developed those kinds of couples, too, that are so committed to their marriages and willing to share the stresses as well as the joys and pray for each other. It's Mm -hmm. it's absolutely crucial. I know when we were talking about that a little bit earlier, um, that, and you said here, Kathy, too, trusting in the marriage. Let's Let's uh, kind of talk about that a little bit. What do you mean by that? And Dan, you know, because I think, Dan, you said to me at one point, it all comes down in it to trust in God. Well, it, it, absolutely. Uh, and and it's important that you both, uh, husband and wife, both believe that. So any, anytime you come across a, a tough situation, you both believe and you truly believe that there's nothing that God can't handle for you. Mm-hmm. You know, God's got this, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> when you come across it and in a situation, a stressful situation, chaotic schedules and what have you. Um, Even we, challenges with your kids, I know. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, both, we both believe God will get us through it. And we, mm-hmm. and we share that common bond of, of, of knowing how important a prayer life is and, and that just trust in God and we'll get through it. And truly the communication is the key, being able to talk mm-hmm. things through and, and knowing that I can talk through anything with Dan. Like I consider Dan my best friend mm-hmm. and me as well. Anything, yeah, you definitely. know, bad comes up. I go to Dan, mm-hmm. you know, he walks me through, helps me talks through things. And you vice know, versa. If something exciting happens, the first person I want to tell is Dan. Isn't it? So, it's so exciting that you both are such great communicators because I can I can tell you from personal experience and all of the, the couples that we know, so often one 
one spouse is a great communicator or likes to talk things out, you know, that Mm -hmm. old stereotype that the, I think women know something like 5,000 more words than, (laughs) or (laughs) 5,000 times more words than men do. I think that something like that. Uh, But, but when stress occurs, often men go into their cave, so to speak, they Mm -hmm. withdraw. Women want to talk it out sometimes. So these are very common problems with couples. So you are both blessed to be great communicators. Uh, but it's been a journey. Yeah. It, it hasn't always right. been. I mean, no, it worked Dan's, Dan's always been the better communicator <laughs> and, you know, quick to forgive, quick to talk things out. And so he has helped me on that journey to help me become better at that too. Well, that's beautiful. And, and Well, yeah. And I appreciate that. But she, she communicates very well, and, and, and we have some great talks. Um, <laughs> See how they affirm each other, which uh, right. is, now, is beautiful. And sometimes now, they have to interrupt each other to affirm each other, right? Right. I mean, because you're both such great communicators. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I just want to, but but as as everyone else in the world, we're not perfect at it. I mean, are, like, are there are sometimes I, some things I say or do that, you know, do we, you know, infuriate each other yeah Um, and the answer is absolutely yeah sometimes Um, you infuriate each other i love to hear that you're not total saints right okay (laughs) far from it we we yeah i'm just like everyone else uh we we do we we do infuriate each other (laughs) Um, and when you look back on the things that infuriate each other are they really do they try to be very minor um absolutely yeah so i think that the best thing to do is right before you when you have something you're thinking about you got to think to yourself um you know is is uh what i'm about to say right now is it going to help anyone is it going to help any the situation and if the answer is no just don't say it right right <laughs> your tongue, absolutely it, it really serves everybody uh, perfect on that I, I love that advice um Think before you talk. Yes. Think before you talk. And I think that's good advice. My own father, who was very, very wise, like your dad, Dan. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about our fathers, how wise they were, and and um, absolutely. My dad uh, always said that be careful of what you say because you can never take back your words. Right. And words, you know, that old cliche: sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That is not true. It's not true. (laughs) Many cliches have have a grain of truth, you know, or or stereotypes uh, are that way because there is some truth in them, but not that one. Mm-hmm. Not that one. Our words can be so hurtful. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what happens when we do hurt each other? Oh, well, you know, you got to be able to say you're sorry and truly mean it. And I think we've done that. Uh, uh, we've both had occasions where we've both had to give uh, heartfelt apologies. And and uh, but we truly mean it. You know, uh, that that's important. Too. Yeah, there's You've got to be truly sorry. It can't be a throw off. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. 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 <laughs> right. And we know. Yeah. Uh, and then that also helps you grow as a person, because when you realize you've said or done something that's been very hurtful, you truly are sorry. And you really want to take the time to express it and, uh, you know, be able to work through it. And, you know, it's it's appreciating the little things. Um you know, just this morning, you know, snow's on the car, you know, and there's Dan out, you know, Caitlin and I are getting ready and there's Dan out scraping the windows, heating up the cars. I mean, it's just the little things, just appreciating the little things in each other um, and making sure to appreciate each other, Mm -hmm. I think is very important. And sometimes in the busyness and stress, we don't take the time to appreciate each other. And even if you do think to yourself... Wow, that's nice that he's so yeah. sweet of him to. We need to say it too. Yeah. The other person's not a mind reader. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Words and, and of Kathy affirmation. Does, Kathy does so much as well, and it is those little things that really add up. And yeah, and uh, yeah, we're just. I, I think we're just. Yeah, we're blessed to have each other. Yeah, you know, but I, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. You know, through those trials and tribulations, it is truly for me. I. I need to take that time to replenish myself and take that time to reflect. And one of the most inspirational things that I've done in the past year is adoration. Hmm. And through adoration, I was introduced to St. Faustina. 
and her diary. Hmm. And I, I'm looking at this image in front of me through very, you know, the divine times mercy. of trial, divine mercy. You know, there were times where, you know, I would just be saying over and over and over in my head, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you because I was praying but maybe I wasn't getting the answer I needed at the time. And so just through my faith journey, just truly, Jesus, I trust in you. Mm -hmm. And then I got to let it go Hmm. and know that he's going to work things out. Mm -hmm. But that's probably been most recent, Mm -hmm. something that's true. How you're still growing after being married 33 years. Mm -hmm. Of course, we never stop. No. And I love the fact, Kathy, that so many people, when they're under stress and, and even stress, particularly in the marriage, they they begin to rely more and more on their own. Uh, resources, uh, which of course are going to be depleted pretty quickly, instead of what you do is try to fill yourself up with the Lord, fill yourself up yes. with his love, because that's our only real source. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, well, and, and realizing that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, you two have a beautiful story, Dan and Kathy, and you're still growing. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. I, yeah. I really... I'll keep them uh, for another 30 years. <laughs> Another 33 at least. Sense of humor is very important. We laugh. Yes. We've that laughed is. every you know, day. That is definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Humor is uh, a funny very, guy. very, very That's important. That's great. Well, and thank she's you. Funny as well. we, we laugh a lot. We laugh a lot. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Well, thank Dan you. Kathy Thanks for Scanlon, us. The Secret to a Long Marriage Sharing the Journey. So uh, you're listening to The Family Sanctuary on St. Gabriel Catholic Radio, and I'm your host, Peggy Hartshorn. Our archives are at stgabrielradio.com. And you can stream us live on stgabrielradio.com. The Family Sanctuary is broadcast at 4 o'clock every Saturday and 2 o'clock on Sundays. So please join us again to strengthen our families and make them sanctuaries of life as God intends. Family Sanctuary is a production of listener-supported St. Gabriel Catholic Radio AM820. Archives of Family Sanctuary with Peggy Hartshorn are available at stgabrielradio.com. Who